entrepreneur, activist, and civil rights advocate, known for his work in technology and digital media, Christopher Bussey has broken his silence after British tabloids pointed to him behind a campaign against Kate Middleton, fueling various conspiracy theories. He is the founder and CEO of Bot Sentinel, an online platform that uses artificial intelligence to identify and combat misinformation, harassment, and manipulation on social media. With all this Kate Middleton affair, he has been uncovering several things related to those photos with the latest video. In fact, Christopher asserts that there are more than evident reasons to understand that it's not as we've been told, and that Kate Middleton's statement claiming she has cancer would be false. Since then, British tabloids not liking being contradicted and having things proposed, especially from a professional standpoint, we're not talking about someone who has written something on social media. We're talking about an expert in this field, and well, British tabloids have initiated this campaign against him placing him in the SAS X squad, meaning among the people who defend Harry and Meghan. This way of infantilizing him has finally angered him. He was the one who said, who started with all the matter of the photos, that's not Kate, that's not Kate, neither is that one. And I want to say that he is a credible person. Yes, he has been critical of the monarchy, but it must be said that he has always maintained that he has nothing against the future queen, that he wouldn't troll her, but evidently there are things happening here that somehow are escaping us. Well, it's true that he has made some joking comments especially about, and I think this is what has bothered them, about Charles and especially Camilla, the lady on the throne who has her minions inside all these British tabloids. Throughout this week, I've seen how they've dedicated articles to him, even delving into his private life, saying he's the son of a single mother, and I don't know what if he's an intimate friend of Harry and Meghan, and that's why he's doing all this. And as if that weren't enough, he also appeared on Harry and Meghan's Netflix show, where he spoke directly about these media. But, well, the truth is, well, this man has had enough and has uncovered little things, little things related to other types of news and a campaign that has been sustained over the past few days with a, the aim of diverting attention. This campaign is led on one hand by Kate Middleton's parents. You know the news about the ruin of their company that are dominating all the headlines. And on the other hand, the release, the release of the Scoop series on Netflix, a fictionalized version of the interview given to Prince Andrew on the BBC regarding the Epstein issue. Of course, while we're talking about that, we're not talking about other things. For example, if it's true, and you know I've been subscribing to it here, that I believe Kate Middleton has cancer, well, little things are coming out regarding the video. Not all of them are fueled by this man. But little things are coming out, like the BBC being used as a shield, saying they were the ones who recorded and did everything, and maybe, you see, the BBC prestige is being put at stake. While we're a little distracted by this, there are news items that we don't pay attention to, that come out internationally, and that somehow, well, I don't understand, they don't buy them. I understand that some may be very taken out of context, but in the media, following the British line a bit, they echo them. For example, with the latest one they've gone after, apart from this one, which we'll talk about a little later, has been with Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, saying that, well, there are people who are making millions with conspiracy theories and such. Well, I'm going to say something. One thing that is true is that all these theories catch our attention a lot, but hey, some of them will be right, won't they? For example, and you know this, there are things I haven't wanted to echo, for example, all these clairvoyants that are emerging, and they say I said it, that she had cancer. I said this, I said that. Besides, very strange clairvoyants from Latin America, especially there's one clairvoyant and maybe, and I know she has a certain prestige among the Latin American audience that might be watching us called Moni Vidant and another one called Vidant Vieira. 
The witch Zambirinho will be coming out soon at this rate, but, well, I want to say that I don't believe all of that, but if there are things that obviously cry out to heaven, where is Kate? The latest information places her at Anmer Hall, at Anmer Hall, which is next to Rose Hanbury. We assume she's going to make her some vegetable broth when she's with her friend. There are things in the British press that, as I say, I don't understand. I don't understand the amount of articles that are against Harry Meghan. For example, not to mention Kate Middleton, not to mention Charles, they start saying that a royal family expert says that Meghan Markle's company, which is a mess, is terribly organized and has come out at the worst time, but well, but it's already playing with the businesses of the ordinary people by these British tabloids. These news items that Christopher Bassey or Bussey, I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, wanted to express and believe me, I have credibility. I've been following him for a long time. It's the first time he's appeared on the channel, and even though I don't agree with some things because I do disagree with some things in the video, because I do understand a little about editing, and in that sense, I do believe that there is meta-language within the video, but I don't really see that it's made by artificial intelligence or that somehow, well, a double has been hired and filters have been applied there. That's evident in the video in the statement from minute one. But beyond all that, I can tell you a little about the content of these books from what little I've found on the web, which I think, well, I don't believe they've sold or anything. It's just that when you want to do a kind of damage control, and you anticipate what might happen, sometimes this happens. In the last days of the king, what is said, speculated about the different cancers that Charles would have suffered and that somehow, well, they would have given him a time of hope, which I'm not going to name. They don't mention bladder cancer, as in touch and the National Enquirer said, but they refer to prostate cancer and another type of cancer that I can't remember right now. I read it earlier. They make a biography, well, quite unjust, I want to say, but quite bellicose against Charles, saying, among other things, well, that he hasn't been the best father, that he cheated on Diana with Camilla, that he has managed to divide the children, that as a person, father, prince and king, he has no value whatsoever if compared to other European monarchs. And, well, they give Charles a fine suit in that sense. It's not particularly... I mean, it's not defamatory or anything. It's the author's opinion, and he presents the facts. And that's why I say I haven't been able to read excerpts to determine if it's made by artificial intelligence or not, but these seem to me a little more like opinions than anything else. And in Kate's case, the book, which I don't have the title of right now, refers to her whereabouts since December 2023 practically debunking the official version that has been given to us even after the statement because these books have just come out, so to speak, two days ago, and, well, a little more. They say that only a few people within the Windsor family know Kate's whereabouts and obviously among them wouldn't be her parents. It's a bit more of a conspiracy story. It's a bit already acts of faith, because what that book promotes a little is the theory that Kate Middleton is dead. Returning a bit to the topic, to Christopher Bassey, I have to say that whatever this man says, it will be questioned daily. In the end, it's a bit of fuel for these British tabloids, and it will continue like this. Yesterday, at night, we were here watching a documentary about the Spice Girls, and it talked a little about Jerry's departure. The redhead, Jerry, as they call her in the documentary, and you can see the influence that these British media already had back, then writing absolute lies about her, denigrating her as a woman, and practically doing everything that Harry recounts in his book. And in that sense, I want to say that I don't understand William's indifference or inaction in this case, because as you've seen, as your brother has seen, as your mother saw, your children will see and as Kate is seeing now. Although now she's getting good press and they are defending her from non-existent attacks and so on, the truth is that to me these tabloids actually come out at one point. They echo in the 2000 about the scandal of the wiretaps and then Rupert Murdoch comes out 
who is one of the well, the big shots of these publishing houses that run the tabloids and says in court that well it's the time he feels most ashamed in his life because of the wiretapping trial. I mean, it's ridiculous, but of course, a lot of shame, but you've become a millionaire from that. What interests me, as I say, and I trust this person, is that the truth comes out, what is being hidden from us and what cannot be said. Understanding and respecting and believing, I repeat, that Kate Middleton has cancer. Within all this, there are things that catch my attention. Yes, there are smoke screens, there are distraction maneuvers, Kate Middleton's parents, Prince Andrew and Well, I don't know a diversion of focus that to me personally seems suspicious. I don't know about you. 